Mirio's original. And welcome to Web Crawlers. This is a mini episode, which is a short version of our longer episodes where we will talk to you about true crime, the occult, and the supernatural, but for a shorter period of time, but usually <laughs> not. I am Ali Siegel. I am Melissa Stettin. And I'm producer Maria. Reminder that if you join our Patreon, patreon.com slash webcrawlers, um, that you will be able to see videos of our episodes uh, a day early, which is exciting. But then listen to the podcast version as well, just so our numbers <laughs> are good. Melissa, what is our episode for today? Well, today we're going to talk about a little thing called Fen's Treasure. Ooh, I like the sound of this. Let's get into it. It's a this treasure chest of gold and jewels that a guy named Forrest Fenn, who is an art dealer and an author from Santa Fe, New Mexico, hid in the Rocky Mountains. What? And he put clues out. You gotta do that. You know, if you're if you're Jeff Bezos or whatever, if you're a billionaire, even a millionaire, take ten thousand dollars and go hide it somewhere. Please, please. Oh, yeah. Because what are you doing otherwise? Well, especially during the quarantine. That Twitter yeah. account that you follow, Maria, that they place money all over the city. Yeah. And they give clues <laughs> onto like where it is. Or- or he just like shows he shows like a picture of like his, a closed fist and he goes I'll give fifty dollars to anyone who can guess what's in my hand. Oh right, and everyone yeah. gets like three guesses. I get some DMs like that, except what's in the closed fist is not suitable for work. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> so who's this Forrest Fenn guy? So he was a pilot in the U.S. Air Force. He became, he had the rank of major and he was awarded the Silver Star for his service in the Vietnam War. Wow. And he flew 328 combat missions in 365 days. That's a year. Nonstop flying, baby. That's right. So he retired from the Air Force and then he ran this uh, art gallery called the Aerosmith Fen with his partner Rex Aerosmith. Living on the edge. Da, 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 da. Aerosmith. And I <laughs> don't want the world to, <laughs> world see, me. to see me. No, I- that's wrong, Ellie. <laughs> that's the wrong song. What were you singing? I don't want to miss a thing. She was trying to sing that, but she was singing. She was singing Goo Goo Dolls. The, don't want the world <laughs> to see to me. See me. Cause I don't think Which she really they should have been singing. Understand. I don't want to lose sleep. I don't want to close my eyes. Cause, Cause I miss a thing. You, babe. And I don't, don't want to miss a thing. thing. That's a good song. These are yeah. all dynamite. We're living on the edge. Yeah, we should make a, a mixtape. <laughs> it's just Aerosmith songs. <laughs> <laughs> that music video, though, with Liv Tyler and... And Bruce Willis and... Um, and Bruce Willis. Uh, isn't that the song from the from the <laughs> movie from the movie where they have to? It's Liv like, Tyler, Bruce Willis, and Ben Affleck Alicia, where they have okay. to say. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of things going on, and I have to break it down for you guys. There's a lot of crossed wires here. <laughs> I'm talking about Liv Tyler and Alicia Silverstone, and you're talking about Crazy, the music video for Crazy, an Aerosmith song. But you're saying it's the Living on the Edge music video. <laughs> no. Oh. I'm talking about the and movie. And in the meantime, hold on. I know. I haven't gotten there yet. This is how many wires were crossed. And in the meantime, Allie's talking about Liv Tyler and Bruce Willis and Armageddon. And oh. she's singing, don't want to miss a thing. Okay. That was like that was like a puzzle. That was hold on. I gotta see. Is can there you a imagine living? Liv Tyler and Bruce Willis in the music video for Crazy? Like two girls in a hotel room. Yeah, like, we're in short shorts. Now is Liv Tyler in the Living on the Edge music video? I don't remember that music video. I don't either. I don't remember anything. I don't know. Where All we I know are is anymore. crazy and um, crying too. Oh, crying. Wait, is crying? What's the difference between crying and crazy? Where do they jump? Where do they do bungee jump off the bridge? That is. I was. That's crying. Okay. I was crying. And then crazy is crazy. 
crazy baby hold on are Alicia Silverstone and Liv Tyler in both of those videos Liv Tyler's only in crazy Alicia Silverstone's in both weird (sighs) Natalie's like cool okay well (laughs) (laughs) anyway so this is the Aerosmith gallery uh (laughs) which became the Fenn galleries which this guy Fenn operated with his wife Peggy and the gallery was in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and it sold a bunch of um, American artifacts, paintings, bronze sculptures, and other art. Mm. And the gallery reportedly made $6 million a year. So he was rolling in the dough. Wow. And in 1988, Fenn you mi- was diagnosed. You missed this most important part. Where? What? Including forged copies of Modigliani, Monet, Degas, and other artists. Oh, I missed that. Yeah. Forged copies of works. Interesting. That's crazy. So in 1988, Fenn was diagnosed with cancer and given a prognosis that it was likely terminal. And so this inspired him to hide a treasure chest in an outdoor location with the purpose of creating this huge public search for it. Whoa. And he also intended this location to be his final resting place with the treasure as his legacy. So that's Kind of interesting. But he ended up recovering from his illness. And in 2010, he published, pu- self published a memoir called The Thrill of the Chase, a memoir as a collection of short stories from his life. Okay, I think this guy's a con man. Hmm? Because let me tell you, he f- he got six million six million a year from his art gallery, and it was all mostly forged paintings and then he's like oh i'm gonna die of cancer oh wait actually i'm not like here's some treasure uh, i don't know i i haven't read this whole that's thing that's an inter- no that's an interesting take i didn't even think about that it's just i don't know i think this guy's a, a scammer but continue so he describes this treasure tray <laughs> he describes this treasure chest <laughs> treasure, 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 treasure chest, chest. Treasure chest. <laughs> that he says crazy nuggets <laughs> Crazy <laughs> treasure. <laughs> so yes. It's my treasure. <laughs> oh, go my heart. It contains gold nuggets, rare coins, jewelry, and gemstones. And he goes on to write that he, <laughs> you're not impressed by this. No, because I think this is, I think that there, none of that is real. It's probably like costume jewelry. <laughs> Some marbles, <laughs> some Hanukkah gelt, like I don't think, and some stuff from from Knott's Berry Farm, the the fool's gold. It's like those jewels on pieces of paper, like those sticker <laughs> yeah, jewels. The, you can use the sticker jewels. The yeah, I think this guy's a hack. But continue. It's a pretty pretty princess <laughs> yeah. box. Oh no. Uh, so he goes on to write that he hid the chest in the mountains somewhere north of Santa Fe. He says that the stories in the book contain hints to the location as well as there's a 24-line poem found in the chapter Gold and More that contains nine clues that will lead a searcher to the chest. And so this book and story prompted a treasure hunt in the Rocky Mountains of New Mexico, Colorado, Wyoming, and Montana. How fun. I think this guy's fun. Yeah. He's definitely kooky. He's kooky and he's creepy. (laughs) He's part of the Adams family. (laughs) Uncle Fen. Uh, <laughs> Uncle Fen. Uncle Fester. Uncle Fenster. And so the value has been estimated to be as high as $2 million, depending on the appraisal of the items. And he claimed to make no money on the sale of the self-published books out of concern for being labeled a fraud by Ali Siegel. Yeah. <laughs> and so before the treasure hunt, he conflicted with authorities over federal antiquities law. Mm. So FBI agents raided his home in 2009 as part of an investigation into artifact looting. Oh, my God. So items in his his possession reportedly included pieces of chain mail from the Picos National Historic Park, human hair, a feathered talisman, and buffalo skull, some which were confiscated by the federal authorities. However, no charges have been filed. This guy ain't right. And what's weird that I read a little bit about is that two people that were targeted in this case committed suicide. And Fenn has blamed the FBI for their deaths. This is weird. There was some scheme going on. There's not a lot of info about what exactly happened. What year was this? Oh, 2009. Okay, so this treasure chest. 
Uh, the chest was said to be a bronze box estimated Treasure to have been chest. this chest. I've never seen Allie less impressed. <laughs> Uh, two million dollars of gold yeah, i'm really right. not this scammer i've seen this i've a scammer knows a scammer estimated to have been forged in the 12th century the chest features a bronze construction with a wood liner and a locking front clasp i mean also it's like this is too piratey like this is he stole this from disneyland like this is insane <laughs> Of twelve, because well, he wanted to make it fun. Yeah. Don't you think that like it's better than putting it in just like a metal box? You'd get it at Staples. That he, it's fun. Yeah, but just like don't pretend it's real. According to Fen, it weighs about twenty-two pounds, and its dimensions are ten by ten by five. Okay, um, five people have died while searching for the treasure. Thousands of people have searched for the treasure. In 2017, the chief of the New Mexico State Police, Peace Cassetta, Pete Cassettas, publicly implored Fenn to end the treasure hunt, saying that he's putting people's lives at risk. Mm. Um, Randy Bilyeu went missing in January 2016 and was found dead in July. His body was discovered by workers along the Rio Grande. And an autopsy could not determine the cause of death, but Bill Yu's ex-wife publicly stated her belief that the Fens treasure was a hoax. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock's. <laughs> Jeff Murphy, age 53, of Batavia, Illinois, was found dead in Yellowstone National Park on June 9th, 2017, after falling about 500 feet down a steep slope. Uh, Murphy's, this is like, this guy's just like sadistic and wants to see what people will do for when they think there's treasure. Um, Murphy's wife, he's like a scammer from day one. Like he's like forging stuff. What? Is that his fault though? Like if he, if you put out a treasure and you go like, okay, there's treasure here. Is that then your responsibility when someone falls down a cliff of Yellowstone Park? Like that's, it's questionable. I don't think like litigation wise, it's his, no. it's his responsibility. But I think this is a guy who's made his whole career off like, I'm going to forge a Modigliani and see what idiot will buy it and I can make money off them. And now he's like, I'm going to hide some treasure and then see some treasure and then see what idiots will go and try to find it. And like, I'll be amused by that and sell some books and maybe get some fame. Like, I think this guy's a weirdo. Let me just, I just want to lay this out on the line here. Is the treasure real or not? No, I don't think so. It, it supposedly is real. But Allie's saying it's not. Yeah, I'm on to this guy. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so Pastor Paris Wallace of Grand Junction, Colorado, told family members that he was searching for a buried treasure, but he failed to show up for a planned family meeting on June 14th, 2017. Maybe, maybe this guy is killing at waiting at oh. stops along the way and is just killing people who are searching for the treasure. His car was found parked near the Taos Junction Bridge and his body was found five to seven miles down the Rio Grande. Because like, why did he have human hair at his house? Um, Eric Ashby, age 31, was found dead in Colorado's Arkansas River on July 28, 2017. Friends and family stated that he had moved to Colorado in 2016 to look for the treasure and was last seen on June 28, rafting on the river 10 to 15 miles upstream from where his body was found. The raft was overturned. Um, Michael Wayne Sexton, age 53, of Deer Trail, Colorado, was found dead by rescuers on March 21st, 2020, alongside his unnamed 65-year-old male companion who later recovered in a hospital. Oh, wow. Authorities were notified by the person who rented a pair of snowmobiles to the men. The, pa uh, the pair were discovered within five miles of the site where they had been rescued from a month earlier. Ugh. Near the Dinosaur National Monument along the Utah-Colorado border. So then this year, the treasure was found. What? Okay. On June, on June right. 6th. Well, I didn't know this. <laughs> <laughs> Fen posted on uh, the searcher blog, Thrill of the Chase, that the treasure was found. He said it was under a canopy of stars in the forested vegetation of the Rocky Mountains and had not moved from the spot where I hid it more than 10 years ago. I do not know the person who found it, but the poem in my book led him to the precise spot. I congratulate the thousands of people who participated in the search and hope they will continue to be drawn by the promise of other discoveries. So the search is over. Look for more information and photos in the coming days. Wait, so did the person who found it ever disclose what the treasure was? Yes. Can you pause for one second? 
Sorry. <laughs> Allie has to go slap herself in the bathroom <laughs> for being forever saying that it was a false treasure. <laughs> stupid. Stupid. <laughs> crazy. Crazy. If you ever want to like have fun, just have a fun evening or whatever, just get a cocktail and just put on yeah. some Aerosmith, put on some Aerosmith music videos. Yeah. And boy, is it fun. Those it's a lot of fun. Videos. Those videos were good. They're good. Okay, sorry. Continue. Allie, we said that you went to the bathroom to look in the mirror and slap yourself and go, stupid. Stupid. <laughs> 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 fucking idiot. <laughs> idiot. <laughs> idiot. <laughs> Um, so on june 16th fen uh released additional photos of um of himself examining the contents of the chest and one of it sitting in weathered condition near the site where it was found so did he find the chest himself did he did he hide the chest and then also find it no some guy found it so on july 22nd, Fenn said that the treasure's finder had authorized him to disclose, in the interest of closure for many of its searchers, that it had been hidden in Wyoming. And then Fenn actually died two months later on September 7th, 2020, at the age of 90. Hmm. So he died right after it was found. And then this month in December, it was revealed that the finder is a 32-year-old former journalist and medical student from Michigan named Jack Doof. And in an attempt to honor what he perceives to be Fenn's wishes after his death, he has refused to reveal the exact location of the treasure. Hmm. Because apparently, like, Fenn wanted to be his, like, final resting place, and he, Jack, didn't want people to, like, go traipsing through, like... Okay, so, so far, I still don't feel <laughs> like I'm wrong. So there's an interview with this guy. He apparently heard about the treasure in 2018 on Twitter. And he was also really into this book by David Blaine called Mysterious Stranger. Wow. Which was his autobiography that had a treasure hunt that offered a $100,000 prize. I've never heard of this book. Apparently, David Blaine put out a book that had like a treasure hunt in it and someone won $100,000. Well, it has a habit of disappearing. (laughs) Yeah. I think treasure hunts are perverted. Like, I'm sorry. This is weird. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you hate a treasure Ellie hates a treasure I do hunt. like I have like I have goosebumps like this is, is weird is Asher okay he's just standing back there like the other way <laughs> oh. he's wagging his tail <gasps> what a baby I had to bring them in because they were barking outside he's, he's probably just staring at you <gasps> the babies you guys getting into mischief yeah. <laughs> um, so this Jack guy he also used to work for the onion mm. And he became embroiled in some controversies early in his career because he made a tasteless joke about one of Sarah Palin's children having Down syndrome. Great. Well, none of these people are good people. He was freelancing at BuzzFeed and he had to apologize for incorrectly saying like a internet cartoonist was a Republican or something. And so like he left the media business. After that, I find none of these people to be reputable. So after he found the treasure, he wanted to remain anonymous. But there was some controversy because a a lot of hunters were unsatisfied with the lack of disclosure. And so they they were like, oh, well, he doesn't want to say who it is. Well, this is this is all fake. This is not true. And that Fen had never really hidden the treasure. They were like, well, if we're not going to know who found it, then like. No one's going to believe this actually happened. And so apparently this backlash took Fenn by surprise, according to those around him, and to address it several weeks. I thought Fenn was dead. Well, this was before he died. Oh. This was back in like July. <laughs> <laughs> Allie found a whole other story. <laughs> Make up your mind. So to address it several weeks after the treasure was found, he released photos of the chest and of himself going through it. And that was enough confirmation for some. And then in July, Fenn suggested to this Jack Stoof guy that they also reveal the state where it was found in order to give further closure. So they revealed where it was found. This Jack guy wrote an anonymous blog on Medium about how he found the treasure. Hmm. He said that to find the solution, he'd carefully listen to things Fenn had said in interviews, finding a few Mm. crucial crumbs. 
He said that Fenn never made more than a couple of subtle slip-ups in front of all the reporters who came to his house. And even those apparently haven't been caught by anyone besides me. So that's interesting. So, and, But okay. then there was a court case that came up after Fenn had died. And the finder's name, this Jack guy, was revealed so he could no longer stay anonymous. So this case that made his name go public was this woman, the Chicago real estate attorney, alleges that the finder of the treasure had located it by hacking her texts and emails and stealing her solution. But she believed the treasure was in New Mexico. So she was just like making all this up. So then Jack, so so his name came out, so everyone knew who he was, Jack Stoof. And he hasn't sold the treasure yet. He hasn't had it appraised. Yeah, because it doesn't exist. He hasn't, and he hasn't shown, he hasn't shown a picture of himself with it or shown what him with it or what it is inside of it. Well, Fenn posted a picture. Yeah, but I don't trust Fenn. Fenn's bullshit. The treasure. So this other guy has never shown a picture of himself with the treasure. Yeah, well, Fenn said it was him and his name is in a lawsuit saying that he found the treasure and this woman is claiming that she solved it first. This is all, this is all a cockamamie internet hoax, in my opinion. I think they maybe knew each other because like, yeah, because like all those people were dying and then Fenn was like, look, would you just like say you found it so people would stop dying it's a possibility yeah melissa you gotta do some sort of like family tree or like something because i i think that this weird or this guy from the onion contacted him to or like from buzzfeed or whatever contacted him to write an article and then he was like listen i can solve all your problems just say that i found the treasure and then i can write an article <laughs> about it and like they're in cahoots like this is all i sorry you can't fool me I'm brunette now. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy, he hasn't he hasn't had the treasure appraised yet. He expects that this will allow him to quit worrying about repaying his student loans for medical school. And he actually decided to leave the medical profession before becoming a doctor. And he's thinking about moving into equities investing next. I thought he worked for The Onion, though. <laughs> no, he got remember you said all those offensive jokes and he quit. And then he went to medical school <laughs> after he worked for the Onion <laughs> and apparently, BuzzFeed? Apparently, apparently, yes. This guy... Okay, now I'm suspicious. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Luther. That timeline. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, he was just revealed wow. this month. His name just came out. So I'm sure some more stuff will be coming out about him. But according to wow. Allie, this is all an internet hoax. What's his name? I'm going to do Jack some... Um, an- Stoof. Jack, S-T-E-U-F. I'm going to do an unclaimed property search on him. Oh, smart, <laughs> smart, be, smart, smart. It's going to be $2 million. Treasure. It's going to say treasure. <laughs> Box treasure. Of treasure. He's from Michigan. <laughs> S-T-U-E-F. Michigan unclaimed property. I've never been on this, this site before, so this is going to be... Let's see. And his first name? Jack. No, there's nothing for a Jack Stoof. He has no so unclaimed property in Michigan. No, check check Los Angeles. I don't see anything for Jack now. Jack is a nickname for John, right? N- I could do a whole episode on nicknames. I think there you some should. nicknames are so crazy that like that's a nickname for something else. Like it's it, it boggles my mind. Jack is a nickname for John. There's so many nicknames that are crazy. It's gonna blow. Like Bill for William, I think is so weird. Yeah, like Dick for Richard. What are you doing? Yeah, it's it makes no sense. Jack, the commonest pet name for John, like John F. Kennedy, they called him. They, you know, they'd say Jack Kennedy, and my grandpa's name was John, and they called him Jack. I don't. Okay. Anyway, so Jack Stu. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it just is what it is. Oh, you know what? Another weird one is Sasha for Alexander. Oh, I didn't know that. That's a wow. nickname? Yeah, it says it here, Sasha for Alexander. But I think that maybe that's, I always thought that that was like Russian, but I don't, it says here, yeah, right? I'm on this website, it says Alexander, a nickname for Alexander is Sasha. Oh my God, well, this is weird. A nickname for Catherine, Aaron. I mean, I get it, but because the name Aaron is in Catherine, but that's oh. great. That's crazy. Oh, that's interesting. Catherine. I was always bummed there wasn't really one for Maria. Like I tried like for a second to get people to call me Mimi, me. but it was like, I don't even like that. What yeah. about May? <laughs> Mar? 
Rhea. Oh, Rhea. No, it, none of it works. None of it works. Oh, my God. I'm trying to imagine you as Mimi. That's insane. Isn't it insane? Yeah, it's like sickening. Yeah. Is Rhea. Crazy. Talk about talk about kooky. <laughs> Rhea, when you're sliding into home and your pants get filled with home. <laughs> Diarrhea. <laughs> like Rhea Perlman. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got out you got Allie. you could be sun you could be sun lisa yeah you're mel you're co- you could be lisa lisa oh yeah you could be Alyssa. ellis you could be ellis melis melis is good melis like melis <laughs> yeah um well anyways uh, I'm curious as to what you guys think. I think this guy is a con artist and a scammer. I think this whole thing is fake for publicity. Uh, I think Melissa thinks it's real. I No, you've opened my eyes. No, I didn't realize the whole forged paintings or forged art pieces he was s- selling in his gallery. I didn't even... I looked over that part. Yeah. Maria, what do you him. think? Mimi? I think he's a saint. <laughs> All right. Um, anyways, email us to let us know what you think. Um, I am Allie Siegel. I am Melissa Ellis Stetton. <laughs> and I'm Rhea Diarrhea. <laughs> I'm Diarrhea of Lasucci. Diarrhea of Lasucci. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> original powered by a cast